How does space technology contribute to saving the environment? Well, um, there are many aspects of it. Uh, one is the observing. I mean, first, first you have to detect. And in detection, uh, NASA is really contributing in many ways, like uh, sending um, satellites, uh, uh, figuring out um, various uh, carbon compositions, you know, and uh, environmental issues, also looking for um, ozone, you heard about ozone, ozone layer, they put an ozone uh, hole which will, which allows, I mean, uh, ultraviolet, rays. ultraviolet rays. So, so NASA has many missions actually, many missions that will be uh, sent up and observe those issues, environmental issues. Also, it uh, it is observing um, ocean currents which has also impact on the environment or climate, uh, environmental issue or climatic issue, which one is it? Uh, environmental. Environmental, okay. But uh, it may have indirect uh, impact on uh, in, uh, the, the ocean currents, ocean uh, uh, so that, uh, condition, then um, also the glaciers, uh, how they're uh, thawing or changing in size. Okay, um, why does NASA feel that it is important to monitor climate change in the Arctic? Well, uh, in the Arctic, there is a huge, huge mass of glacier. And um, if something changes, if a big chunk of glacier uh, comes up, comes off, uh, that um, can change the ocean level. That's one of the reasons why uh, we, we need to maintain the temperature, the current temperature of the Earth. Well, if the glacier thaws, glacier, then it raises the ocean uh, level, and that has all direct indirect impact on climate and environment. Low lying air can be inundated, people will have to move up, salinity issues, all these issues will be. So this is a this is a, this will cause um, some effect. I mean, it, will, it will cause something that will affect the environment, not directly, but it will cause this thing. This climate change of this scale, is it a natural phenomenon? Is it like natural? Uh, climate, you know, some are natural, some are man-made. Uh, there, that's both the components are there, man-made components as well as natural. Now uh, we can hardly do anything about natural. Causes. Okay. However, we can do uh, something. It's possible to do something when that's anything that's caused by human habits, behaviors. You know, human. Con we, we contribute a lot towards this climate change through our our actions. Okay. As a member of the scientific community, what are your views on climate change? Your personal views. Absolutely. Well, we, uh, we human beings are. Um, our behavior, our, con 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 our consumption is causing a uh, lot of impact, we are, a lot of impact on the environment, so we, we, we are impacting the environment and uh, we need to pay attention to our energy consumption, our daily consumption is so high that it has serious impact and we need to do something about it soon because don't do anything about it, it might be too late to reverse this trend. So, yes, we, we need to be, do something and we need to do something quick. Okay, um, is there a space technology which can be exploited to develop renewable energy right now? Well, they are already being used. A lot of um, uh, uh, alternative energies, like, for example, solar panels. Has some uh, history uh, how it was used here and how, how, uh, how they were made efficient, you know, and that is still being made efficient. And space technology has a lot to do with that. Also, um, space technology is, is contributing to uh, come up with new materials, light materials, which are uh, used for turbines and uh, you know, wind, wind, wind mills so that we can efficiently extract. Those energies. So yeah, these the technologies are being used uh, widely to make um, energy 
renewable energy sources, renewable energy uh, more efficient and more cost effective. So yeah, so, it's, so, so space technology is playing a big role. And they have been playing a big role and they will be playing a big role. Okay, thank you. That was the end of